What is up, guys? It is me, your boy, KWIS, and we are back again with another video. And boy, howdy, do we have a doozy of a video here. As you can tell by the title of today's video, we got a lot to talk about. Um, obviously, just a bit of a talking head right now. Well, no, there's probably going to be gameplay on the screen. Let me know. Is there gameplay on the screen right now? I'm, I'm unaware. Um, either way, just a bit of a talking person right now because there's talking needs to be done today. And before we begin, I would like to please remind you guys to subscribe. Around 60% of the people watching my videos are not subscribed. Really would appreciate if you guys free to subscribe. Maybe hit that like button as well. We are actually dangerously close to 50,000 subscribers. That's halfway to 100k. I really would appreciate that. But enough about me because today's video is about something going on in the tech community that i am very much uh i don't know what the word i want to say i'm conflicted on but i'm i'm confused i i remember i was conflicted misusing my influence he was lucy was all around me anyway found myself screaming in the hotel room anyway um yeah it's i'm very confused with what's going on um i'm sure as actually if you guys are not aware of what's going on i guess i'll catch you guys up um, essentially, what's been happening for a while now is that certain content creators in the Tekken space that made mods content, they were modding the game, um, they started to get like copyright strikes on their YouTube channel. Um, there's there's one content creator in particular, I think their channel's in danger of being deleted or has been deleted by this point, this was a while ago. And it seems Bandai Namco are striking a lot of mod content on YouTube, they're taking things down, they're, they're doing copyright claims on Twitter content as well. I've seen people's, I've seen people's uh, posts on Twitter get taken down, you know, I saw one post about like the battle pass and someone showed like a modded outfit for nina a few out few outfits for nina actually they looked really good uh then ban namco took those down as well i think the first time we saw something like this was someone made a mod for the jun tech and tag 2 outfit they made a mod for that and obviously mods are completely free to download right um and then ban and amco took that down you know they took down well they took down the video as far as i'm aware on twitter and youtube i don't know if the mod still existed but they took that down and in in that case i felt like it made perfect sense right like the tekken shop was just coming out at the time they're literally selling this outfit it's kind of you know competing with you know bandai namco with the tekken team in that one i literally was selling this outfit and you're trying to you know do this for free sorry you know we can't have that so that made perfect sense to me um but then like i, I knew someone made like a naruto mod for raven that also got taken down um, and just in general, it seems like mods are just mo mods. It seems it seems like what's going on right now is mods are having there's a, there's a big no no, you know, when it comes to mods in this game. And that's basically everything. I think you guys are, are caught up on everything right now. Mods are kind of an issue right now. It seems on Tekken side, they're not a fan of mods in this game, right? And if you guys were around for Tekken Seven, you know, it didn't it didn't seem like that was the case. You know, mods were flourishing. There were so many mods. You know, you could, you watch any streamer who played on PC, they had mods, right? I had a lot of mods in the game, right? You know, character mods, stage mods, were like I had a bunch of mods, everyone did, you know? So I think that was, it was something that did. But here's, all right, while, while I say that, right? Like, yes, everyone had a lot of mods, right? Um, but it was never seen to be officially supported by the Tekken team or Bandai Namco. Um, which is also evidenced by this tweet from Pun Life here that I saw today. Um, if you see this, Michael Murray is actually, you know, showing that he is aware of mods. Um, it's something him and Harada are aware of, but they they don't really touch it, right? Um, but I, I think this is something I've been saying as well. You know, these mods, they violate the EULA and the terms of use. So I think if Bandai Namco or the Tekken team ever decided to strike them and take them down, they're well within their legal rights to do so. Right, and even him, Michael Murray said this was back in 2020, you know, that it's a risk. He said back then it's a risk. And I vaguely remember a tweet by Harada. Um, I don't know if you guys would remember this, but there was like an Elden Ring mod uh, for Tekken, right? Like a lot of characters got Elden Ring mods like Gigas was like Radan and da 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 da. It was like a very well done mod. Um, and I think people like were adding Harada in the tweet like, hey, look at this, look at this, look at this. I think Harada actually responded to it. And his, his I, I, I think his sentiment in the tweet if i remember correct was along the lines of hey this is cool but don't show me this because i'm not officially allowed to look at this type thing like i'm not i'm not supposed to be seeing this you know it's cool and everything i like it fan of elden ring however 
weren't allowed to be supporting this officially type thing right so mods have always been um a bit of a it's like it's like a it was like a rule that was never enforced you know it's like mods are illegal but you know we're not gonna do anything about it you guys seem to be okay with that whatever and now come along to this game it seems like they're finally enforcing that they're like listen um sorry mods are not okay you can't do what well, i say that let me let me let me pause and go to two points so the first point i want to touch um i'm not going to mention any names or anything because i don't know the legalities or anything i'm not trying to you know i i, I am not a lawyer i am not a rapper um so i'm not trying to but essentially uh as far as i'm aware someone made aware on twitter today that they received a notice from bandai namco uh from copyright infringement you know regarding to mods to do with tekken 8 and it seems like bandai namco are now starting to take legal action etc etc this is what's happening now um and like it it, it just it seems like you know mods are a no-go i think that has been there i think they've had a very clear stance on it from you know the strikes and this and that etc etc you know the mods are just a no-go in this game and again if you go back to mike morris tweet from 2020 he said listen it violates the eula the terms of use you shouldn't be doing this even though we might think it's cool you know you do run the risk of getting into trouble which is you know it's it's been aware for some time now you know it's not a case of like this is this is you know new information coming out of, of the woodwork but for me personally i think why I think why the community is so up in arms right now is because we haven't heard anything officially from them right besides this you know uh notice of a copyright infringement we haven't seen anything from Bandai and Amco saying like we haven't seen you know Harada, Michael Murray etc etc get out and say listen we need to say mods like they're a no-go you know I feel like I feel like that's what people are waiting for I feel like they're waiting for i think if they did come out and say something you know listen uh we we understand it's annoying da, 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 but sorry we can't do more to this game i feel like that is that that's what people were that's what we've been waiting for that's what people have been waiting for right um but again i don't know the the legalities in that i don't know if they're able to say something it could be higher ups at ban and amco above my kamari and above i mean if you see my kamari's tweet from 2020 he said listen this stuff is out of our purview anyway um but it could be people above them that like this could be the ban and amco heads saying listen we're done sorry this doesn't it's not allowed you know and you know is my kamari and harada's hands are tied they might even be allowed to say anything about this that's the problem right and I think that's where the the conflict with the community is is right now because the community want them to say something. There's a chance their hands are tied. Um, again, mods were never really allowed in the first place. They were just overlooked. You know, they it was they were aware it was going on, but they didn't do anything about it. And now they're finally doing something about it. And it's just a case of like again, this is probably just out of their hands at this point. I do wish they'd say something personally but they just might not be allowed to and i really don't like this sentiment i see online all the time is when like something bad happens i mean the times have changed to be honest i said the times have changed uh because it, we used to be at a place where like when something good happened in tekken uh people would if this is how it would go something good happened in tekken people thanked harada something bad would happen in tekken people blamed mari that's how it used to go right uh, but now I'm seeing people blame Harada and Mori, so I guess that's progress? Um, I don't know. Either way, I'm not a fan of it because it's not like these people are there making the decisions like mods must die. <laughs> right? Like that's I'm sure that's not how it's going, right? Um like I've met Michael Murray multiple times and met Harada and like from the times I've spoken to Michael Murray, he seems to very much care about this community and you know want the game to succeed and want the community to succeed. I don't think he would do anything to to sort of hurt this community right so again this is why i'm saying it's probably above them right there's not much they can really do at this point um and i guess people are waiting for a statement people are waiting for something and people have also kind of come up with their own solution the sentiment i've seen quite a bit online is people saying listen why don't bandai namco just work with these modders right you know we've seen some of the mods they do they're good enough to the point that 
everyone was using mods in Tekken 7. Some of the mods I saw for Tekken 8 were really good as well. Like there was one pirate Nina costume that looked amazing. Um, why don't they work with these modders to sell the outfits for the Tekken shop, right? These people are doing this work for free. You know, I think you could pay them, get them to actually, you know, this also, this also outsources the work. You get someone else to do it. So these people focus on tech and shop or whatever, you know, they focus on this. They've done the preview, like we'll get these people to focus on it instead. And then you guys can, you know, put the rest of your, your, your resources to balance in this game. Because that's also another issue you have right now is the kind of broken things that are going on with Tekken, Tekken 8 right now. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of, and again, that's, just, I feel like that's like the fairy tale solution, right? Like I, I would love to see it because some of these mods do look really good. And I think people are willing to pay for these outfits. I've seen people say online, like, listen, some of these mods are so good. We would have no issue paying for them. Right. Um, but it just feels like such a fairy tale, high school musical Disney channel ending. It's like, we're going to work with the mods instead. Like, you know, I, 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 I would love to see it personally. I, I don't know how reasonable it is. Um, because speaking from someone who's been a content creator for this game for a while now, um, I it it took a I think it took a long time to sort of get acknowledged by Bandai Namco and the Tekken team as a content creator. Um, and I'm not saying that in the case of like because I was a small content creator going up through the ranks. Like I spoke to King J about this type of thing. I've seen uh, Main Man you know, uh, uh, not really get support from Bandai Namco, et cetera, et cetera, for a while. Um, I feel like only recently we've started to be like, you know, uh, acknowledged, you know, there's been events we've been invited to. Um, Main Man did his guides on the Tekken channel, or was it the Bandai Namco channel? I can't remember, but he did his guides over there. You know, they, they send packages from time to time and stuff like that. It feels like only recently we've been acknowledged for that, right? I feel like this might be another step that takes even even more, you know, uh, even more time to, to to get done, right? Like now we're gonna collaborate with the modders and da da da. da. Like I I would love to see it. I really would. Um, I just don't know how how possible it is. Like I think one of the main messages I want to get through in this video as well is that is that like we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Um, I I wish people would stop just like I guess because they're the they're the. The, the the faces we see all the time so people just say oh this has to be hard and michael morris fault is playing them is playing them it's like i wish we would stop doing that as a community like uh, when i'm streaming i get messed i get people come to my chat all the time like why is harada doing this why is michael morris doing this i'm like bro i'm sure they have better things to worry about you know when it comes to this game you know the the tech and official tech and twitter put out a tweet today talking about the issues you know going in the game the cuts you made a tweet about that as well as that like, listen we're working and fixing this right like i'm sure they're, 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 listen, these these people have traveled to multiple tournaments. They've gone, Michael Murray and Harada, I can speak for, um, they've gone to multiple tournaments. They've traveled all over. Some, like, sometime not even, not even just to announce, you know, DLC. They've turned up to tournaments just to be there with the community type thing. You know, uh, at the Tekken World Tour Finals this year, these guys were at the after party, you know, turning up. Um, so it's like, these people care about the community and i think they deserve a little bit more grace when it comes to this um you know i don't think they're not the corporate suits that are, are are destroying our game type thing i think there's again i think it just goes above them really and truly because at the end of the day like you know michael murray said it four years ago you know this stuff breaks the terms of service it, 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 it violates the terms of use, You're violating the EULA, not allowed to do this. Nothing's happening now, but you run the risk. And now something's finally happening. Um, and personally, I would just, I feel like the, the everyone wins solution is what people are saying. They hire the modders, get them, you know, to, to make these outfits, etc., etc. They can focus on that. You know, people would love to pay for those outfits, I'm sure. You can even maybe make them even a bit more premium if you want, charge a bit more for them. Because again, like I think monetization is also a bit of an issue the community has right now. And I think uh, FDX actually tweeted about this. Um, he got a comment in his comment section, which I think might be. So again, I've spoken about this before. I don't think I've mentioned it on stream. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it in the video. I mentioned it on stream. 
Um, but there was this, someone left this comment in FeedEx's uh, YouTube comments uh, section. Uh, I don't know why I phrased that so weird. Um, goes as follows, people should understand the reasons the current underwhelmed post-launch support for Deccan 8 lies in Bamco's recent fiscal report. Their Genshin Impact clone, Blue Protocol, flopped hard in Japan, which means they have a bad year and Deccan has to take the financial brunt. It's all clearly accelerated the monetization plans and that's why in such quick succession there's both tech and shop with ports of older costumes, fast return on investment and hastily throwing together battle pass. Tech and 7 points aren't honestly the most baffling part. A blender sphere as an accessory. Okay, first off, we do not we do not criticize ball around these parts anyway. But the features still take time to implement and note that they ship two complete new monetization systems for the series in just two months, which means they sap development and QA time from gameplay and network, which is why the issues like tornado bounds and floor breaks, floor breaks slip into the public builds and pluggers are slow to get punished. It'll be a rough few months until tech and team readjust to live service development pipeline, but I think it'll get better in the end. Our task is not to sugarcoat it and point our task is not to sugarcoat it and point these issues out if we like this game and wish for an improvement. Now again, do not know how we can verify this information. It sounds plausible, right? Like it sounds real. I look at them like, mm, that makes sense, man. Like this guy, you know, this guy, this guy is kind of spitting. You know, I'll, I'll, I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. Oh, uh, so yeah, it, it does. It does make sense. And I think that is, that is why they could be taking this very aggressive route towards modders as well. They're like, listen, we need to do something about this, you know? Um, but again, I, 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 again, it's just, it's a, it's a YouTube comment. You know, is this is is an unverified source without citation. So, you know, as far as we were aware, Tekken 8 had a great budget yeah, because Tekken 7 did so that. well, etc., etc. You know, why like is Ban and Amco punishing Tekken 8? But this, I don't know. You know, I do not have the answers. Much like Sway, I do not have the answers. Well, maybe you guys have the answers in the comment section down below. Please let me know your guys' thoughts on this. Please try and keep it somewhat civil in the comment section that's all i can really that's all i can really say at this point um i'm, I'm not afraid to call a bitch out of my comment section i'm be so real about that like if i see any if i see any aggressive anti uh uh, uh abrasive aggressive uh uh animalistic language you know you, you might you might bring out my dark side um but anyway thank you guys for watching this video please like comment subscribe um, if you enjoyed, especially because I might be committing career suicide by doing this, like uh, you, you guys should know, I am a tech model commentator, but maybe I don't know if I'm, I'm allowed to be speaking about these kinds of things. <laughs> but I'm gonna be so honest with you. Um, so yeah, who knows? Um, hopefully, there's no issues in the future. And if you guys don't see me commentate tech on tournaments this year, uh, you know why. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next video. There we go. Oh, I was wondering why the entire time I had not broken his phone. Game, bro. Game. Game.